Joining us on the program, Catherine Tem from Campus Reform, the uh, reporter who broke the story. Catherine, thank you for your time. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, so how did you actually learn about Professor? And is it Professor Guth? Guth Guth, yeah. I know. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, well, I was just going through Navy Yard tweets, kind of assuming that some professor might have said something, uh, you know, searching with that in NRA. And I was right. I saw this, and I, I kind of couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, because what he said, I, I mean, again, he, he, he said he hoped that the next time something like this happened, that among the victims— it's your sons and daughters, meaning yours, meaning right. anybody who's an NRA member. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, you know, again, I don't care if you're anti-gun or not. Right. That's just a weird, sick, horrible thing right. to say. Well, you, regardless of what you think about the NRA— Definitely not cool to wish that anybody's kids were murdered. And, you know, somebody tweeted at him pretty much that, how dare you say that about people's kids. And he tweeted back, God's justice takes many forms. He also wrote about it in his blog. Yep. Spoke with him on the phone yesterday. And I said, do you regret saying this? And he said, hell no, twice. So it wasn't just a tweet in the heat of the moment. It's repeatedly defending these statements. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So since you posted this story earlier today... The story really has taken off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, there's not been any retraction. But I noticed the University of Kansas has been tweeting to folks who have been tweeting about this, saying, look, this was his personal Twitter account. We right. don't agree with what he said. We express our sympathies, uh, you know, uh, to the folks who were affected by, by this. Um, so the University of Kansas is definitely backing away. Meanwhile, you know, I reached out to him on Twitter, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and he immediately said, no, free speech, free speech, prob man. They probably told him to shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything about his 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 first right. amendment rights. I just you know had asked him about this, but uh, it appears as if you know this is the first refuge of scoundrels right now. Is just you know I've got my free speech rights, even if nobody's disagreeing with that. Right. Well, nobody's disagreeing that with that. The thing is, is he's a, he's a professor, and he's going to have students in his class certainly who are children of NRA members and these students have a right to feel comfortable in the classroom and not n know that their professor had recently wished that they were victims of a mass shooting that's the issue here and you know so what about those are also his twitter does have a link on the top of it underneath his name to his pro his professional profile which does identify him as a professor at the University of Kansas. So personal Twitter or not definitely associates him directly with the university. Uh, yeah. And, you know, as we saw, uh, Michigan State University recently, you had a creative writing professor who made some comments about Republicans and, mm -hmm. and said, you know, look, I'll treat you guys fairly in class, outside of class, wink, wink. And he right. ended up getting a semester-long paid right. suspension, which yes. is a paid vacation. Right, he got to go away from him where he might face any heat. And just collect his huge salary, which is paid for, you know, by the students and the taxpayers. Right. At MSU. So in this case, are they going to like erect a statue? For right. This professor I don't. I don't campus? know what they're going to do. But I mean, I, I the the school just sent me an email saying, you know, this is our, you know, not our beliefs. It's horrible. Blah blah blah. And I asked them, so what do you plan to do about students who might feel uncomfortable? And I asked them, you know, because the school does have a social media policy, but I, I guess it only applies to technically uh, school accounts, but. I mean, that's not the issue here. The issue is these students have a right to be comfortable in the classroom and they have a you know right they have a right to freedom of expression. And how are these students, if they are, you know, supporters of Second Amendment rights, how are they gonna feel comfortable expressing those opinions, knowing that that will make their professor want them to die? Well, yeah. I mean that's the thing. Um, mm -hmm. there are a lot of students there, right. uh, and, and frankly, there are a lot of you know. There are probably some colleagues right. uh, that this professor has who who might be not just a little offended, but maybe even a little bothered by this. I mean, right. again, this isn't just somebody saying, "I'm really bothered by what happened in Washington D.C." Gosh, I wish we could have more gun control laws. Mm -hmm. This this was a guy who says, "If you're an NRA member, I hope your children die." Right. He was saying, I hope it doesn't happen to anybody. And he thinks that makes it different. But he's saying, you know, I hope it doesn't happen to anybody, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen again. And I hope it's your your children. Okay. That is that, it, not even I hope it's you, but I hope it's your children, your children. I, I mean, that that's th this is coming from a guy who's, you know, trying to say, you know, trying to act like he's some sort of pro, you know, peace guy, you know, anti-gun. Right. Th that's more violent than anything I've ever heard come out of the mouth of anybody uh, that's in the NRA. Well, absolutely. And, and, I, and I said this before. I'll say it again now. I don't think two wrongs don't make a right. Right. And if gun owners see any gun owner acting like this uh, while they're representing gun owners, call them out on it for oh, goodness sakes. I, I mean, absolutely. you know, that that's the other thing. 
you know, when we talk about the need for greater civility and blah, 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 the people who often say this uh, then turn a blind eye to the most offensive and egregious statements that are made by people like this. What, what's wrong? Where's Jim Carrey? I mean, where's Jim Carrey to say, dude, over the top, right? right I mean, where's right. some of these anti-gun celebrities to step in and say, okay, look, I'm not a big fan of the NRA, but you're really out there. You're, you, you, don't, you don't speak for me. Right. Well, because, because they, you know, maybe because they know there's nothing that they can really say. I mean, they don't ever want to tra retract anything. Obviously, there are rumors at the beginning that this was done with an assault weapon, and they weren't retracted to the point where people like this professor still seem to think that it was done with an assault weapon. Because I did want, I had, a, you know, a conversation with him, and I asked him, well, what kinds of things do you mean should be done? He said something needs to be done about guns. He's like, well, like outlawing assault weapons. This was done with a shotgun, not an assault weapon. Right. So th this wouldn't have prevented it at all. So it's just more of, you know, spreading misinformation and not understanding the issue. Just this issue in the mainstream media, guns are bad. And if you support gun rights or Second Amendment rights, you're bad. So, uh, you know, you, you said that you uh, you found this because you just you sort of had an idea. You had an inkling that a professor had said something somewhere mm -hmm. about this. Um at campus reform, uh, I mean, you're seeing this type of stuff, maybe not always about the gun issue, but you're seeing this stuff on a regular basis. How bad uh, are these college professors or how bad has it gotten on college campuses around the country in terms of professors bloviating like this and students knowing, OK, I can't respond. I can't be myself right. or else I'm going to get in trouble here. Right. I mean, it's, it's constant. You know, USC, this another student videotaped something at USC where professor was saying all Republicans are stupid racists. I mean, it, it's it's constant. Like I can't I went to Hillsdale College myself where this was obviously not. Did not you actually. An issue. So at Hillsdale, at Hillsdale, when you went into some courses, did you have college professors be like, you know, these progressives are stupid. They're all no. stupid. No. Absolutely not. Really? Absolutely not. I mean, it, there was, uh, we knew that a lot of our professors obviously were conservative, but this isn't even these professors saying, I'm a Democrat or I'm a progressive. They're saying the most horrible things. And, and these, you know, like the creative writing class, for example, that's, an, uh, that's a subjectively graded class. Right. I would be horrified, especially because he was saying he was going to come after students who he thought were closeted racists and he thought Republicans were closeted racists. Right. If you have like the wrong bumper sticker on your car, is he going to follow you out of the parking lot? I mean, what does that even mean? That's horrifying. Yeah. No, it is. It mm -hmm. is. And and if you're a student, I mean, how do you push back against this? I, I had said earlier, you know, if I was a student, maybe I maybe I dropped the class. Right. Well, you know, at the Leadership Institute's or the campus reform, basically we are reaching out to students and asking them to come to us and let us know about these things so we can bring them to light. And because, you know, kind of before, a lot of people don't know how it's going on. People are horrified by this and shocked because they haven't heard that it's going on until recently. And so that's like the most important thing, I think, to kind of get students to come to us and help them out and use us as a resource to kind of get these things out so they kind of know what students are going through in the classroom because it would be hard to do it by yourself. It would be hard to, you know, step out as a Republican or as, you know, a Second Amendment supporter, knowing that your professor has these extreme views and will hold it against you. Absolutely. And what's sad is that we hear um, within the academic community all the time that, uh, for instance, one of the reasons why we can't have campus carry is because our universities are one of the last settings where you can have freewheeling exchanges of ideas and you can have contentious debates that often get very emotional. Not so much, apparently. No, I wrote a story, actually, I don't remember, it was a few months ago, I think, about how Los Angeles Community Colleges made gun restrictions so severe that the, um, sec the gun safety class that had been taught at two of the campuses could no longer could no longer be taught oh, just yeah. by saying non-operational weapons as well, claiming that students might see a gun on campus and get scared, even if it were non-operational. And I talked to one of the men uh, who had been teaching this forever, and he said, yeah, these, these classes were taught in locked rooms, the windows drawn down with non-operational weapons. So there's absolutely no way that anybody would ever just bump into a gun on campus and become horrified. So it obviously wasn't about that. No, ever. in fact, I remember we, we talked about this story a lot. That was a great story again, Thank you. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, because this guy, I'm blanking on his name, mm -hmm. uh, was the subject of a front page cover story in LA Weekly, the alternative weekly paper for Los Angeles, the big one, when he was on the uh, on the local school board, he is he had he had managed to tick off everybody that he worked with. He had such a 
uh, a personality problem. That was, I think, the headline, the personality problem of Brett, yes. blah, 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 blah. Yes. And it was like basically what a self-aggrandizing jerk this guy was. Mm -hmm. Scott Svonken, thank you. How mm. could I forget Scott's Lord Svonken? How could I forget? Um, and we asked Lord Svonken to appear on this program, but he wouldn't he, he wouldn't ever respond to us. Right. But, uh, that was the deal. Like he he had decided. Oh, no, no. Well, he doesn't know anything. He wrote it. And I said, what does not non-operational mean? He said, I don't know. You wrote it and you don't know. And you're going to come out and say that to the media. I mean, it, I, I'm not surprised he didn't want to talk to you. Not one bit. That's you know, that that's something that I think is a real commonality here, Catherine educators people who consider themselves i'm sure to be quite intellectual right. and quite knowledgeable about stuff opining about stuff that they know absolutely nothing about and refusing to admit they know nothing about it right well i it, it concerns you know all of us at leadership institutes campus reform that we you know this is going to be worse in the future because at these campuses students are not having to defend their beliefs either so how are they going to be able to ever argue anything from another side if they have to it's just kind of taken for granted that the progressive perspective is the correct perspective and if you don't take that perspective you're ignorant you're racist you're homophobe mm -hmm. you're all the, these other these other things and that's just taken for granted it's not something that anyone ever has to defend you know, back in the late 60s, this is before my time, but back in the late 60s when the new left took over and they, you know, they, they actually literally took over college campuses, mm -hmm. they complained that the establishment had made these campuses irrelevant, had made the topics that were being discussed, you know, out of date. It wasn't uh, the, the, the education that people were receiving on these college campuses were not applicable to modern life. Uh, they felt like the campus themselves had become or the campuses themselves had become these sort of antiquated uh, uh, places. I tell you what, here we are, Catherine, some 50 years later, 45 years later, and you could make the exact same case from a conservative perspective. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, th these professors are just allowed to use their um, their classrooms. You know, it's it's not even like indoctrination at this point. They're threatening. They're threatening conservatives. It, it's, 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 it's completely just unacceptable. And the fact that, you know, this one professor is on a is on a paid vacation, and that Uni University of Kansas is not doing anything about this professor defending it as free speech. This is an outrage, and people should be calling the schools. People should be, if you disagree, then you should you know, make sure something's done about it or do all you can to make sure something's done about it, or it's going to keep happening because it's been continuing to happen. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, listen, campusreform.org, you guys are doing a fantastic job of covering this stuff you know look the the big television networks uh, the cable news networks they don't have they, they don't have campus correspondence mm -hmm. uh and so if we're actually and lord knows as a parent our kids aren't going to be honest uh, and tell <laughs> us what's going on on campus when we give them a call so in order for us to really know what's going on we need organizations and groups like yours that are reporting from the classrooms and reporting from the quads and you know, really reporting from the front lines of, of these ideological and intellectual fights. Yep, definitely. Well, Thanks. keep it up and come back in studio, will you? All right, I will. Thanks. Yeah.